Welcome back to the Hero Nation Show, guys, the place where business owners and entrepreneurs just like you come to learn tools and tactics to live more epic lives. I'm your host, John Reinhardt, and beside me is Elizabeth Austin. Elizabeth Austin actually is a realtor here in the DFW area. Yeah. What, was it, what, were you, what were you saying earlier? Powered by the Good Home Team with EXP Realty, because I'm not just with those bitches, I think is what I said. <laughs> And that is going to be the precedence <laughs> that is going to set the rest of this this conversation. So if you're offended by that, come back later. <laughs> All right. So, so you've had a lot of accomplishments in your in your business career, and a lot of people that come on here have. Um, you know, we were kind of doing a little pre-interview kind of thing going on, kind of chilling out. You know, and. Um, you said you said something that was really interesting. That you said that you were originally with a, a different group of people, and there was a change in vision, which then led to yes a and no. So I'm actually I was still with the group of people that I'm with today, which uh -huh. is the Good Home Team. I spent two and a half years out of the past f almost four years with them, actually running the team and producing. Um, and it was this past April that I chose to step down and just focus on production just because there was a change of vision for what we saw for future growth for the team or how we were going to get there. So, okay. and what we all wanted. So now I imagine as with any good change of vision, I love how we're being so PC here. I love, I, uh, <laughs> which is not <laughs> us if you know us. So, uh, okay. So about, so, okay, about to get real. So, uh, okay. So let <laughs> All right, so you have this change of vision. We have this moment where, like, okay, things are changing. And I'm guessing, how did, how, let me first start with here. How did that make you feel just right off the bat? Oh, that's a good question because it wasn't anything, you know, it wasn't a quick decision. It took about, it was possibly on my mind for about a year leading up to it. It was heavily known between me and, and the people I was chatting with for about six months before I officially made the decision. Um, so there were multiple feelings. It's the hardest decision I've made to date in business and even in some ways a personal life because I'm sure most of you know in real estate, I mean, the people that you work with become family and that's what I consider these guys. So um, it was incredibly difficult. So I went through a range of emotions probably over six months to um, being really nervous, being sad, being angry, probably having a little resentment for things that I concocted in my head that may or may not have actually been true. Um, a, a ton of self-awareness, a ton of evolution personally definitely happened for me during this time. And I know that's all very general to say I'm, I'm out of it now and I'm removed. So remembering specifically can be kind of tricky, but, um, it was a broad range of emotions. You know, I, I know from, you know, in, in my past and, and, and I think a lot of people say, you know, when you, when you're partnering with people, cause you're, you're, you're morphing, you're moving with, I don't care what you're morphing with the market or you're morphing with, with the people, with that the people you have? like, Hey, this is where I am in my life and yeah. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. So what did those conversations look like? Those conversations let me tell you, it taught me a lot about communication. That's yeah. for sure. Um, it taught me that I wasn't always as good at it as I thought I was. <laughs> um, it taught me a lot about listening because there could be times when I feel like I could say one thing and have something I could ask them to regurgitate back to me what I just said. And it was still something totally different than what I just said. And so then I wanted to make sure to be aware of that if I did that to people. Um, but those conversations were just brutally honest, but we were actually all very gentle with each other. If that like, and I think that's because there's true, like friendship, love, family baseline there. Um, but it was honest too. I mean, if you know any of us, you know that we are honest to a fault. Um, most of the time, fully transparent. Um, and so there was no hiding any sort of real feelings, real facts, real stats, anything that we were possibly looking at or considering when determining what would it look like if we were to move forward in this direction versus what does it look like if we don't move forward in this direction? Um, so, I mean, the conversations though were actually very respectful of one another the whole time that they were happening, which was great because I did step down. It was my choice and I'm still with that team today. So I hope that speaks volumes about our relationship, this team, the opportunity, because I think when you see that in this, um, 
in our field, someone who runs a real estate team that they don't own, when most people step down, most people probably step out as well. Mm-hmm. And they don't stay on the team and continue to work with them. And and for me, when I said that there's a change of vision, I meant it because I still see business opportunity with these guys. And I still fully believe that we're better together than we are separate. I love the fact that you, and I think it's just brilliant, like, you know, when you're, when you're having a hard conversation, you did something, which was like, I said something, and then, hey, what did you hear? Yeah, that one I learned. My, I think my mom may have taught me that one, because I was like, yeah. I feel like we got nowhere in this conversation. And she was like, try this next time. And I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Someone else is being regurgitated back to me right now. Yeah. Another way of doing that is, <laughs> I feel when you because... So another thing I learned, I learned choice, word choice Mm -hmm. very much during this whole time, because you can never tell someone how they can feel or how Mm -hmm. they should react. But I can tell you how I feel or my perception or. And so some of those keywords I learned got across what I was feeling without putting on to them how they must have intended to make me feel, which I think was crucial, as well as like, you can't argue me as much. And it's incredibly disarming rather than it could be very easy for all of us in fierce conversations to Mm want to get heated, want to get angry. And that solves nothing. So you want to feel justified in your, in your Sure, of course. And then you have to go over that at some point. (laughs) (laughs) So the other, I think the other thing that I, I I, like was really kind of fun was that you're like, hey, there's still business opportunities to be had, even though we're going to change, you know, you're changing, so I'm going to change too. Yeah. How did you bring up the fact that like, hey, I know you're going this way. I'm not going that way anymore. But I think that there might be an opportunity for us to change the way that our relationship works on this level. Mm-hmm. And like I can go do this opportunity. Honestly, as directly as possible. So I think that that's incredibly, incredibly crucial because I'm also I don't want to waste time. Mm-hmm. I, time's the biggest commodity that I think any of us have. So if I've got these ideas and visions of what we can do together now or in the future, if you don't agree or if we don't really think it can happen, then I don't want to waste time here convincing myself that they can't. So if I'm already pulling a Band-Aid off of some sorts, if something in the future can't happen that I want to happen, let me know now, please. That's the biggest courtesy that you could do mm. to me and for me. Um, so I had to be direct. And also at this moment, when we're laying everything on the table. Like, why the hell not? Honestly, why not just talk about why I'm making this decision, why I'm making the decision to stay, what I see in the future, why I think we're so great together. Can we continue? Can we get past this? And and can we continue to be great together? So, so what if they had said, no, we can't get past this? Well, then we probably would have gone our separate ways. It's as simple as that. I Here's the thing. Neither one of us, this is crucial to know, their success is not dependent on me and my success is not dependent on them. That's huge. But like I said earlier, I think we're better together than we are apart. Mm. And so this is where sometimes we have to push egos aside. Because if you also know any of the three or four of us, we all have big egos. But I think we're still humble enough. It's what keeps us cute. We're still (laughs) humble enough to hear out other people um, and to put the ego aside to make the decision that we think is best for now or for long term. I think we're also not short sighted thinkers um, and look more for that long term vision than we do the short term game. So how did you develop that relationship to begin with? That's a good question, actually. A lot of people well, probably I ask try that. to ask really good questions. <laughs> Great question, John. <laughs> See, okay. there's my ego getting stroked. Thank right. you very much, everyone. <laughs> okay, you're such a like words of affirmation, aren't you? Because I will make sure to be like, tell me I just did good. <laughs> <laughs> did you recognize that success I, I just I, I had? Think, I, think any, <laughs> I think any creative or any artist of any type, like if you want to like just words of affirmation oh, are like, I'm all five with the love, love languages. I'm as high maintenance as they come. I could get rid of two of them, but I'm really all five of them. Um, okay. So it started with, uh, me starting on their team as a, on the good home team as just a traditional real estate agent, actually as a buyer's agent. Honestly, I built the foundation of this relationship through 
earning it from a business standpoint first, meaning I worked my ass off and this wasn't for them either. This was for me, although I do like to be the best and, uh, you know, I'm very competitive. Um, so when I joined this team, there were some agents who had been on the team longer and a few months into the team, I was like, Oh, they've got good businesses. I need to have better business, you know? And so that kind of fueled me competition and money, uh, totally fueled me in the beginning. And so I laid the foundation for these relationships of being a hard worker, being motivated, being driven, going out there and taking business. And then my first year onto the team, becoming that top producer over the agent who had been with them for four plus years at that point. And then I've maintained that spot, maybe not always throughout the year, but by year's end, if you look at it, I've always remained the top producer by the time we do the final tally. So I think that's how I earned the right to more. And we kind of talk about that on our team because you, once again, time's our biggest commodity. We don't just have it to give away to everyone. So I want you know, for people to have more of my time, they're going to have to earn that. And then it became a reciprocal relationship and then a friendship. And honestly, it's like family now, but it absolutely started with me taking this business seriously and working my ass off. What are the three core values that have allowed that relationship to flourish both in the past and now present and then later on in the future? It's a good question. I know like the core values that we hire to on our team this so was probably not quite the same. Because mm-hmm. um, you were talking about core values as partners versus core right. values as employees. I love that we talk about it as partners here. Like, honestly, sometimes this feels like a relationship. It's a weird work relationship, you know? Yeah. Um, there is totally mutual respect either way, like goes both ways. And that also with mutual respect doesn't mean that we don't know the other person's flaws and that we don't call them on their shit. Um, So I think that mutual respect, though, uh, has been something that was built in the past and that continues to help us flourish for the future. Um, Do you believe that they gave you respect first or that you gave them respect first? That's a good question. That may have also been pretty mutual from the get-go, honestly. Mm -hmm. We set the tone pretty well from when I got hired onto the team over Facebook Messenger, not having met either of them, nice. either of the brothers. Um, that tone was set pretty well because I set my own kind of standards of, is this how you lead your team? Or like, what are the expectations you have? Like I've already been in this position once for a week and it didn't work out. So I'm not willing to come work for you if X, Y, and Z. And they're like, okay, cool. Like we can work with your demands if you can work with ours, you know? And so, It started kind of mutually, but I mean, more than anything, once again, I still think I earned it through showing up. I earned it by doing what I said it would do. I earned it by keeping my word. That's not earning respect. That's earning trust. Well, that's true. That's earning trust. I guess you're right. Um, But I don't know. I kind of think it goes into respect, too. I mean, maybe trust, but also then when I can deliver upon that, I think you respect the fact that I keep my word and that I perform how I say I am like I think they kind of go hand in hand a little bit I think we had a baseline of having it for one another Mm -hmm. and it was either there to lose or there to grow upon and I think with everything I think we just grew with it which is good Um, and then the relationship that kind of evolved and built from it helped continue to grow that mutual respect for one another um There's a natural curiousness to all three of us about future opportunities, each other, people, business, real estate. So you wouldn't say you're risk adverse? No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I think the fact that that's there is really good. I keep wanting to say that there's like a level of competitiveness, but I don't know if that goes really to our relationship as like business partners together as it does like from the actual business itself and what we're looking for and people we bring on. Basically the consistent and constant pushing of each other to reach higher and higher goals. That's 100% and, it. And we're in another zone like that where we're doing that to each other right now. And actually it's funny, Nick kind of did that to me the other day and with in regards to this new business venture that we're in right now it was like okay I'm gonna need you to kind of like step it up and and yeah. and my initial reaction wanted to be like 
Like you don't How know what dare. I'm doing, and How like dare you tell yes, me to step it up. But then that moment, step it up. I know. <laughs> but then in that you moment, step it up. <laughs> in that moment, I was like, okay, actually, this is him looking out for you. It's him looking out for himself a little bit, but it's him looking out for you. It's him pushing you. And you know what? He's right. I can do more. And so like immediately, and thank goodness I didn't respond because I wanted to have kind of a bitchy response back. And then I was like, no, this is where like with conflict management, I like to take a step back, uh, whether it be for a few minutes, a few hours, a day to really don't ever need more than a day rather than handle something because I like to process to see, am I being logical or emotional? Because I hate nothing more than being emotional. So I want to make sure I'm being logical or something really bothered me. And shit, it only took 20 minutes for me to be like, well, I agree with him, (laughs) you know? Right. So that's a trait I've learned about myself, too, in this partnership. (laughs) What flags do you use to to allow yourself to stop the reaction? I think this comes back to communication. And if I'm reacting or if I'm speaking and if someone else's reaction isn't what my intention was from the words or actions that I chose, that's when I can sit here and say, hey, you know what? You're not reacting how I intended or your reaction was not my intention of this conversation. I don't think I'm communicating effectively. I want to take a step back. Or sometimes it can also just be, I can feel really overwhelmed with all of the thoughts in my head. And it can be, I want to go sort this out to see which ones are actually important to me, which ones aren't. Um, I think I have to do that more sometimes being a woman in this business because trust me I'm a woman who has held a man's position and I in an industry that is already actually male dominated which is so funny because for the longest time real estate was not male dominated it was a female dominated industry um so I think I probably extra consider that because I never I'm already on an uphill battle a little bit so I don't now need to be labeled as an emotional female and so I think about it that much further I'm also just naturally a very logical person, honestly. So I'm not a big emotional reactor. Doesn't mean I don't have my moments. I am human, but (laughs) Um, it's just different things I've learned growing up and in this business and where I get the best outcome that I want. That's probably been the biggest thing is how many times have I reacted emotionally and I still didn't get what I wanted or get a reaction that I wanted. So, but but I'm still looking for like, what is the flag? Right, because when you feel like the reaction come, and you're just like, "Fuck it," uh-huh. you know, we're we're going out, red, you know, red, white, and blue bombs coming from the sky, <laughs> you know, um, you know, like, th- like how did you learn to catch yourself? Because I think I think a I lot didn't. Of- I I learned by failing forward, so I learned by blowing shit up and not having the reaction that I wanted or not getting the end result that I was going for. And now all I've done is blow up and possibly hurt or ruin a relationship or an opportunity or a possibility and still didn't get out so, of it what I wanted. So did that make like a, that's, that's an after the fact though. It is, it so is. What, what, what is the, what is now the conscious stop? I, the it, stop it? It's got to, I mean, I get what you're, I get what you're asking here. The hard part is, is you're looking for something tangible and. I'm going to tell you, it's just an innate feeling or an overwhelming, like I can see red in that moment that I just like see red or I'm overwhelmed with anger or something. That's when I stop to take that step back if I can okay, so and that, to realize. That's, 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 the, that's honestly the red flag. Yeah. The red is the red flag. The red, the red is the red flag. <laughs> I start seeing red and then I'm, uh, then I'm like, okay, and this is the action. Yeah, that I'm because going to they're, take to and then I this. can probably, by the time I give myself, I can probably remove 50% of those emotions or feelings and be like, oh, you were all bullshit that I just wanted to pull out, but you're nothing constructive or not helpful at all. So has has that ever happened with your partnership, or uh, and, uh, where we've had like a red yeah, flag like, moment? Yeah, where you hit, or even where you've had a big blow up moment. Not often. Now we've been um, in business together for almost four years. Oh, yeah, I can. There's been, there's been at least one or two. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> there, there. Yeah, honestly, I can probably count on one hand how many times it's happened. At least in the moment where I thought there would be a fight and sometimes there'd be a fight where Nick's like we're not fighting we're not fighting and I'm like motherfucker yes we are we're (laughs) fighting right now don't disregard the fact that I want this to be a fight um 
but honestly, I can count on less than one hand how many times it happens because there is such communication there. And like, there really are no boundaries. That was kind of my joke to being unhealthy because like, we'll talk about anything and everything, but that's also helped us to have mm-hmm. the open communication and the good business, like, you know, that we have had together. So, um, but that, that can be really tough because, um, you know, th- with the team, it's run by Nick Good and Austin Good, and I'm way more involved on the day to day with Nick because Austin's so busy with his investment. So, I can think of like one, maybe two fights with Austin, and it was like such bullshit stuff from like three years ago. Um, but with Nick, you know, we're so much closer when it comes to working together. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is where we're very different. He's had to learn to respect me because he is the guy who wants to talk about it all then and there in the moment. And I want to talk about it. Like, I want to over communicate this shit, but I probably do want two hours a day, something to get my head right, make sure I'm not having a pity party, make sure I'm not being the victim or victimizing myself in a situation. And then we can talk clearly. Um, and then that allows us to actually hear each other. So, working in such close proximity with your business partner mm-hmm. on a day to day, hour by hour level. Uh-huh. Um, how do you not kill each other? You know, we really don't. <laughs> okay, so here... Well, because, you know, so, I mean, sometimes you, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's... It's pretty it's, rare. It's almost like, you know, being in the same room with your spouse for like... Oh, for sure. It's day. like a work wife, work husband <laughs> situation. Um, so it's really funny you say that. Honestly, I would hope he'd answer the same, but we'll see. The same amount of times I've had those fights are probably the same amount of times that I've truly wanted to kill him. Otherwise, it's been just like jokingly, like, or very small little ways. But if you know us, it's like the male and female version of each other. So actually, his wife pointed that out to us. She was like, oh, my gosh, you are the female version of him. It's ridiculous. So I think that helps us have an understanding of one another. Mm. Um, but no, honestly, I talk to him five to seven times a day on the phone, and that doesn't even include how many times I see him. And it's just, but there's no fluff in there. Like when we're done, it's like, all right, I got nothing else for you. Bye. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. So what would you tell people to look for in trying to find relationships like that or partnerships like that? What Give us, give us um, five things that are red flags to tell you to run away. Okay. And then I want five things that you need to look for. Okay. So you're going to hate me for both of those because it's no set thing to run away or to look for because it's case by case for you. So for instance, I was on a team very briefly before I was with them a whole week. I said brief. (laughs) And this is someone who I have major respect for still to this day, who we could hang outside of business and be great friends, but we did not work well together. And this person um, was much more micromanaging. For me, I'm very independent. So I could not have business owners or leaders at that time, especially when I was truly working maybe underneath them in a way. I could not have someone who micromanaged me. That was a red flag. So number one... Yes, but be, but my red flags may not no, be no, someone but else's. So I, but see, well, that's a that's a part of a red flag. I would say that would be number one. Make sure that their management style matches your yes. work style. Yes, one hundred percent. Okay, number um, two. <laughs> um, okay, so why did you have to do ten? Dang it! Um, <laughs> expectations, mm. I think, are a huge one. Um, this person had expectations maybe that I was responsive any time of day to her or to leads and that resulted in me even getting text at like 5 30 in the morning um and I was like like I'm definitely gonna let you down if I'm not you know responding and texting to you then um that then made me feel like crap I'm not doing this job well as well like it didn't didn't make me feel warm and fuzzy right so then that immediately kind of put another so expectations i think with maybe communication or expectations with how you show up are going to be really crucial um other red flags so if we're keeping it within real estate i mean 
This is why, I mean, personality styles, I think, are so crucial because the way we do business is not the only way that business can be done successfully. Mm -hmm. And so when I was recruiting to the team a lot, you know, I would, we may pass on people who could be great producing agents, but you didn't match with us because... First of all, we're very joking. The no boundaries, we're no PC. We're going to cuss. We're going to make jokes. We're going to have a good time. We may be drinking in the office occasionally. We may or may not have a bar that I started (laughs) in the office. Um, And if that's going to offend you, then we're probably not the right culture or style. So culture, I guess, whatever that leader has created as a culture, because that's impactful funny story when I was first looking to join this team since I had this experience where I was like crap that was not what I expected it's not what I wanted I was kind of against real estate teams so I was reaching out to people who were on the team and I was like tell me like give me the inside scoop I'm doing my recon this time and when I did that one guy said we're a little rough around the edges and that sold it for me. Like for me, that was the winning cue of, yes, I don't need someone who's all teed up and tailored and perfect. Like I wanna be able to be myself and I'm the kind of girl who I am, who I am, who I am in any situation. So for me, that was a big plus. So the culture in the office, because culture does start top down, I would say. Um, I was a big part of creating the culture we have today for the team, having been that leader for two and a half years. Um, But before that, even if there wasn't as much of it, because it was a very different style of business we ran then, there was still a culture there. Um, So look look at those. Um, Then I would look at, I fully intended to leave these guys within a year of joining their team. So my goal when I was looking at who should I partner with was, I do I want what they have because if I don't want the business you've created or the life you've created then why the hell am I in business with you Mm -hmm. um or working for you at that time so that one look now they're just flowing (laughs) um so that one was really huge for me um and I intended to just soak up the knowledge and listen to them and then go do it on my own And then make sure that there's continued opportunity because if there hadn't been, I would have probably left after that year, year and a half. But because there was continued opportunity, future opportunity, are these people that you can build with for long term? It's fine if it's not, and it's fine if that's not your goal. But if that's your goal, it's going to be better if you can figure out if there is future opportunity that's actually tangible that you can have. So if you could leave um, our guys with three things that um, would increase their communication effectiveness. Got it. Today. Okay. What would it be? Number one is what is your goal? Like the goal outcome you want from the conversation or the communication you're going to have, because that's going to change how you approach the conversation. Um, Just had to do that with a friend of mine who lives in California who's having problems with her boss and she came to me about it and I get all of these details and I was like what's your goal and I was like you know what we need to forget three quarters of this or you have to let it go or none of that rehashing it it's going to get you what you want so you just got to let that go and let's focus on what your actual goal is here I think that's huge um one of the other big ones I think is never assume how someone else or attack someone for how they feel or how they took something like you don't get to whether or not that was your intention. You don't get to tell someone how they get to feel about something that you just said to them. Um, and I think that is crucial because then when you start to do that and you use your, you choose your words, um, closely, I guess, then you can use words like my perception was, or I felt that the power to that when you're using it then is that they also can't argue against you for that same reason. Um, And it's, I feel like it's more, it's better in getting heard and getting truly heard. Now to also make sure you're truly heard, I think is to ask, what did you just hear back from what I said? Or like, can you say back to me now the reasons that I just gave you? Or how how did you word that earlier? What What is your reaction when someone's like, you, you tell them something, uh-huh. they say it back to you, and it is nowhere <laughs> even close to what you tried oh, to say. that one is tricky. Because <laughs> then, because I mean, there's like this, sometimes there's like this moment of like, 
What? Yes, yes, you're like, totally like, like, right. <laughs> so if you're in sales, you're already used to probably saying the same thing five different times, five different ways to get them to hear you. So it may be changing up how I say it to see if they can hear something different. Sometimes, and this is any situation, like I'm not saying this is what happened to me, um, but it can get to the point where you're like, you know what? It's not changing anything. This maybe just solidifies, you know, whatever, like whatever decision you're trying to make based off this conversation, let it go and move on at that point. But I would try first changing my conversation, but my reaction in my, my face, I'm going to really try and control it so that my face is not out loud, but that's hard. But in my head, it may be like, what the fuck? Like, are you kidding me that you just regurgitated something completely different back to me than what I just said? But that may not even always be them. They could also come back to you and how well you're communicating. And that's, I will always put it back on me before I'll put it on someone else. So how many times would you change that, uh, that, uh, what you were trying to say to communicate it effectively before you're like, fuck it and then walk away. That's a good question. Um, case by case for every scenario. Oh no, 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 no. That's me. Like, uh, no, I think for sure. Case teasing, by case. No. I mean, but it's probably a minimum of five times that I would try. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah. About like five My minimum ways. that I would give it a go would be five. I can't tell you what my maximum would be. Depends on the situation. <laughs> <laughs> That's my maximum. Right. Oh, your min and your max are your same. Well, yeah, well, because I, well, <laughs> I think it, at that point, if you go past five, I don't know if at that point you're really trying to communicate to them or how much you're trying to justify yourself. Okay, that's a really good point. Actually, I love hearing that, is how much are you looking for justification versus actually being heard? And that's where, yeah, and depending on whatever, like, fierce conversation you're having, because that's what we're... Communication on the daily is good, but I think we're also talking about it more in terms of fierce conversations you may have to have with business partners, with clients, with friends, with relationships, whatever it looks like. And sometimes you being like, you may have to get over you feeling justified. Yeah. That's putting your ego aside, and that's some tough shit to do. But if I've learned anything, once again, is you feeling justified getting you any closer to your desired outcome here or your final goal. If it's not, then you just have to eat shit. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you so much for um, for being here and uh, going over all this fun stuff. Guys, I hope you actually got something out of it. Um, uh, type in the comments below if you have any uh, any great piece of pieces of advice for us. Maybe you know of better ways of having really uh, difficult conversations. Maybe you're like, hey, th there's something we're missing. I want to know in the comments below. Maybe you agree with us. Just let us know. Just type we it down We love when there. people agree with us. Yeah. So she's, she's <laughs> going to read all the comments and comment to each and every one of them because she has so much time. And <laughs> <laughs> Because that's how many comments there are. <laughs> And with that, that's the Hero Nation show. <laughs> See you guys next time.